Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as he do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, there's a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. You come over to our website at TFNN. You go into newsletters, and you're going to see the opening call on the left-hand side. Just hit that subscribe button. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. You get it for one full year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Basil has approximately 10 to 11 archives out there. You really get to understand the Chapman wave and how Basil rides that wave each and every day. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Well, what's going on is, if you remember last week, I was looking positively and said that we've been adding to our long position in the Dow a few times long. And, but all of a sudden here, wait, let me show you something. First of all, for those people who are not used to my work, let me show you uh, the Chapman Wave methodology. The core is that we try to identify the low bar. We've been very fortunate. We've been able to pick lows for a long time uh, at most of the key uh, low points in the Dow. But this particular one, uh, when I look at the uh, the waveform, when you get to the, th the uh, fourth highest peak, peak D, that's when you've got to be cautious. And we are looking at in the Dow, we're in leg C. Today we made a fraction of your high before we pull back quite sharply, not as sharp as the big gain yesterday. So this is still leg C. This is the daily chart. The weekly chart is still within this uh, rectangle formation. And the monthly chart has this uh, downtrend line. I call this the falling axis. It looks like a declining cone pattern to break out of. But if you look at the S&P, and the reason why I'm a bit cautious is that when we get to a peak D or E in the Chapman methodology, yes, you can go higher, but that's when I get kind of, that's where I'm anticipating that there could be some kind of a pullback. So if you look at the S&P, it's in leg D. So it's already accomplished what I call the buy signal upgrade to a buy mode, which says you should go to at least a peak, not you, but the, the price that we're following should go to at least a D. We made the D in the weekly chart. Look at that nice cup formation. And we're going towards the top. The uh, nine period in the weekly chart is still very, the nine period moving average is above the 14. The bank D is good. Stochastic's kind of weak. And the monthly chart here as well, you can see we're bumping into this trend line that says you've got to break out of that decisively to start improving that monthly chart. Then we get to the QQQ, one, two, three, there we go. This is the NDX uh, 100 trading vehicle, the uh, Invesco QQQ Trust Series. You can see looking at the monthly chart, it's actually a little bit better. It's making a nice arch formation, but it's just bumping into resistance. You can see in the weekly chart, it today made that leg D. So I was saying to subscribers, we want to be a little careful. We're not going to add. We've had some very nice positions. We've taken a little bit off to take profits. And I got a little bit, little bit cautious here because once we get to this D, um, I have to analyze and see how the market appreciates uh, the technicals. If they're improving, that's a very good sign. And, and to tell you the truth, the stochastic, which I look at for a long time, and if you look at any, any technical a textbook, it'll say over 80% is overbought and under 20% is oversold. The, the implication always is that if it's overbought, that means it must get underbought, right? I say, no, no, no. Over 80% is good. Over 90% is really good. Over 95% is fabulous. That's what you're looking for. So I don't have any signals right now to say that there should be a market turned down. But this is where I start to look at things a lot more carefully and become a little bit more cautious. Um, I do like this 96% uh, in the uh, stochastic in the QQQ. And if you look at the SMHs, you and I talk about this for years now, how the SMHs tend to beat the market up or down. And I always think of the semiconductor, the chips, as the oil of the, of the 1900s that, that already fed the great economic growth through the uh, 1900s, the 20th century. Now we've got the chips and they basically the same sort of thing. So they are commoditized, but they are stalling here. If you look at the monthly chart, they're still way underneath the 318 a high that was made in January of last year. And they dropped all the way down to 161. Now they've had a very good gain to 257. And all the technicals are still very good. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, what are you going to do 
to change that. And I'll just give you numbers. For instance, the SMHs, the semiconductors, if they start to trade next week under 250, I'd actually like to say under 247, that says, uh-oh, trend change. That means you're probably going to get the QQQ trading underneath. At this point, they're at 318. If they, go, if they start trading under 309, that's not very good. And the S&P, um, I'm going to give you the level of, it's already done in this particular pattern that I talk about, this expanding cone formation, this declining cone, I call it the falling axe, because if it breaks out to the upside, it can go one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. So it's done, not the one-to-one -one yet, but it's done a very nice expansion in the same degree with the same number of bars. So if the S&P suddenly stalls and it starts to trade under, uh, I'd say, 39.92, that's going to be that's going to be a sign to say, uh oh, got a problem in the Dow. I'll give you the Dow number at this particular point. The Dow should go to a leg D. It's in leg C. It should have a pullback to to make that peak D peak C, so that there's no new high to make that peak C pulls back and then it breaks that peak C for leg D. So that says this has got a little bit further to go, but at any point, if it takes out the uh, thirty-two thousand six hundred level. That's going to be a problem. So those are the those are the things to look for on the downside. But in the meantime, as I say, the technicals are actually pretty good in most of the indices, and I'm following it. In, I'm just following it pretty technically based on the Chapman Wave methodology. And so far, we still remain long. And of course, we have a holiday week happening, right? And it's a shortened week, so we, that means we wrap up Thursday, and that means if you get a down day tomorrow with no new high in the Dow, and then Thursday you pop up, it says who. Be a little careful opening up the following week, the week of the 10th. But so far, uh, as I say, I've got to wait for those things to unfold. I don't want to over-anticipate. Although, as I said, we've already got leg D in the in the, in the the uh, index 100, the QQQ, and we've already got leg E in the S&P. So what but, do you think um, about these rates? You know, it's so interesting. The, I'm... I was going to ask you this question last week, and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll wait, but you've just asked me. I was going to say to you, is there any chance, and I'm just throwing this out, I haven't really got an answer, is there any chance that the market, you know how the market takes a particular issue and then starts to, it, it's very important, then it pushes it aside? So my question to you is, do you think that there's any chance that this market could continue holding very well. It doesn't have to break to the upside, it doesn't have to break to the downside, but holding very well, anticipating um, that, well, anticipating that it's getting used to the higher rates. Because, I mean, once the rates start to go up, um, that, that's a problem. But I'm looking at uh, many things that say uh, there should be some sideways movement in the TLT. You can see the TLT right here. It's, look at this. This is the rectangle in the weekly chart. So I've kind of dismissed rates for the moment. But so the, the question to you is, do you think the market could handle just uh, the issue that rates could go higher or not? Yeah, no, I, I think the rates have topped myself. I because think, they look, they stable. Yeah, I think they're top. Yeah. Hey, happy I, uh, Passover. And a happy Easter to you. Big time. And we look have forward to the show tomorrow, Basil. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.